Dr. Naveed Sayed, he's the, he's the pride of the Shia world and the world of science. He's a neurobiologist at the University of Calgary, um, and he's the head of the Department of Anatomy uh, there. And what he's actually done is he's, he's proved the concept that uh, neurologic cells can communicate to computer chips. So the implications of that, just so we understand what this means, that in my, medical science today, if someone has a stroke, if someone gets paralyzed, there's nothing we can do. But the work that he's done has laid the foundations that one day, from the beginning of mankind until now, we've not been able to do anything, but because of his work, one day, inshallah, there'll be a day that if someone's had a massive stroke, someone's been paralyzed, that they'll be able to be, have a solution and bring them re a rehabilitation. This is the power of an azadar that he has, he's really shaken and he's really changed the course of human development through his work. So he will be speaking to us and sharing his thoughts on, on the physiologic and cognitive effects of Azadari. Please welcome Dr. Naveed Sayyid with a loud salawat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Ali Madad. Zaban jab hamd me khulti hai to dil tham leta hu. Zaban jab hamd me khulti hai to dil tham leta hu. Khuda ke naam se pehle Ali ka naam leta hu. Zindagi ki mushkilon me dam hi kitna hai shaji. Zara tehro, abhi mushkil kusha ka naam leta. So, um, I think one of the greatest impact of Azadari on you has been the patience that you have exhibited since 8 o'clock till now. So, may Allah reward you. I have a, first of all, I'd like to have a disclaimer that I am not a scholar. I ha I'm in the company of very, very learned scholars. Um, I am a, just a neuroscientist. So, um, what I would really like to do today, though, is to give you the neuroscience of Azadari. <laughs> so I will give you historical perspective in the, both the psychology of human nature as well as the neuroscience and how it has shaped our, our majalis. Now, as I said, that um, I wouldn't have really dared to even accompany these learned ulama and then speak to such a great audience here. Had it not been for Amir and Minahad Bahai here, um, they actually threw a bait and the one bait was Ziyabhai, <laughs> which I couldn't turn down. The other one they promised me was the actual Zari of Mala Abbas. So, <laughs> So I would say, Kartas pe ye kya dile hassas likh diya. Lagta hai kalbo jaan ka ehsas likh diya. Mainne kaha tha likh de zara maniye wafa. Mere kalam ne hazrat e abbas likh diya. So um, I have had this tradition whenever I chair university major committees. I would always have a chair on my right hand side. And the president of our university, who's Jewish, he said to me, the Naweed, can I ask you something personal? And I said, sure. He said, I have noted that even though I, along with other vice presidents, we're attending the meetings, but there is a chair on your right hand side that is always empty. And if it's not there, your secretary brings one and he puts it there. So he said, tell me what is the secret of that chair? So I said, since you have asked me, let me tell you, that chair is a reminder for me, the kingdom and the chairmanship belongs to Mami Zamana. <laughs> and I seek his support and help. And I say, Mawla, if you give me the is, I will, I will show my strength because you are my strength. So he started to smile and he said, well, how do you know that your imam actually supports you? 
And I said to him, many a time when my secretary prepared the minutes of the meeting, I always ask her, when did I say this? It's not in my speaking notes. I have never thought of this. How come it showed up in the minutes? And she always smiles and plays the tape recorder back. So I actually have my back covered all the time. And it's important, most people would say that, you know, Hamari pushed hai Mola ke naam ki taraf se. Ye pushed nahi hai, ye pushed panahi hai. The other disclaimer that I have is that um, my talk is really not a comparator or comparative studies between namaz, salat, or azadari. They are very too dis distinct. We everybody knows the importance of salat and taqwa. This is really not the subject. Even those who killed Imam Hussein, they were saying, let's finish him off. We have to complete prayer or salat. So please try not to compare. It's such a simple thing, wajibat, they are wajibat. There is absolutely no excuse whatsoever performing all of this. So let's put this aside. And Maulana had spoke very eloquently, telling you the importance of this. And I would also like to thank you for your kind words, but I would say that Sharaf ke shahar mein har baam dar Hussain ka hai. Sabhi gharano mein uncha wo ghar Hussain ka hai. Main ji raha hoon jahaan mein karam Hussain ka hai. Kasam khuda ki mere dam mein dam Hussain ka hai. Zameen kha gai kya kya bulando bala darak hara bhara hai jo abhi shajar Hussain ka hai. Ya bhai mohabbaton ke hawalon mein zikr aane laga. Mohabbaton ke hawalon mein zikr aane laga. Ye faiz bhi to mere hal par Hussain ka hai. Huzoor Shafai Mahshar Ali Kahen ki ye shaks Gunagar bahut hai Magar Hussain ka hai So I, I have divided my talk in three different parts The one I have been asked to speak about The actual um, past of Azadari And then I will make that transition in the current time And I will highlight some of the really important issues um, and the, um, that we may confront in the years to come. Um, and I think my learned um, senior, um, all the Azadars and Malai who are sitting, my talk is actually not directed at you, it's rather this youth which is the future of Azadari. And I think that if um, we like gulab jamun or ras malai, we don't take it when we go fishing. We take what fish likes, otherwise we catch cold and no fish. We can sit there all day you will never actually catch a fish. So it's really important for us to ask what it is that our children will like to see in Azadari. Do you guys know Wayne Grasky, the hockey player? Somebody asked him, how come you have this many assists? And he said, I do not pass puck to my partner where he is, but where he's supposed to be. If I passed him puck here, he's already skating fast, he's gone. So we have to give our children azadari, not where we got it, but where they're going to be. So I think this is an important aspect for us to think that we have to elevate this, you know, the overall impression of azadari for our children. So, you know, um, we know who the founder of azadari, as we see, is, is our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The year when Bibi Khatija Salamullah Alaiha and Janabi Abu Talib, they passed away, Prophet declared it as a year of mourning. So anyone who tells you that mourning is, is only restricted to two or three or four days, you can remind them as to what Prophet's sunnah was. He declared the entire year as a year of mourning. And similarly, I think when um, Hazrat Hamza was killed and Prophet visited, and most of these Ansars, they were crying on their own people. And Prophet said, no one is crying on Hamza. 
And when he went, the Ansar said, stop crying about your own people. You go and visit the house of Hazrat Hamza and you cry over him. And when Prophet found out, Prophet said, may Allah bless you and your children and your generations to come. So I think the tradition again, the third example we see is when uh, Imam Hussain was born. And Bibi Fatima Salamullah Alaiha She wept when Prophet said to her that Hussein will be in the desert of Karbala shouting, Hal min nasin in yansurna. They will murder him. So she said, she started crying, and they said, Who would then respond to his calls? Prophet said, Allah will create a race. The children will cry for Hussein's children. The elders will cry for Hussein's elder. And they will remember him and also respond to his calls of Halmin Nasir and Yansurna. She took some comfort. Then she said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, how would you reward them? Do you promise to me that on the day of, of um, you know, Mashar, that you will perform the Shifat? The Prophet said, not only I, but all of us will perform the Shifa. So we already have this promise that has been given to us. And then we also know that when these criminals in history, they burned down the door of Bibi Fatima Salamullah Alaiha, she used to cry and they didn't like her cries. And they asked Imam Ali to move her out of here so she can go and cry somewhere else. Imam Ali created Batul Hosn. This is where Bibi would go cry. And I think this is something that we should do in our Azakhana to create a spot where we can just go and, and actually remember her, her loneliness. And this is how the Imam Bargah should be really decorated. لیکن سب چلے جاتے ہیں شبیر کو رو کر اکبر ایک بچی نہیں جاتی ہے ازا خانوں سے there is a little girl that is constantly in this ازا خانہ and may her presence here bless all of you may you never have any troubles in your life just because of that little girl and also after the events of Karbala when Bibi Zainab Salamullah Alaiha, she continuously held majalis in the streets, in the court, and in bazaars. And in the bazaar of Kufa, she shouted, Go upon you, a people of Kufa. Do you realize which piece of Muhammad's heart you have severed? Which pledge you have broken? Whose blood have you spilled? Whose honor you have desecrated? It's not just Hussein whose headless body lies in the desert of Karbala. It's Prophet Muhammad's heart and it's the soul of Islam. She set the stage of Azadari Majlis in the open. And also when the news of Imam Hussain's murder um, arrived in Medina, immediately there was an outcry. And so the, the actual walls of uh, Prophet's mosque shook because of the cries and every day people will gather in the afternoon and they will at the Jannatul Baqi and they will also remember Imam Hussain <clears throat> and then when prisoners were released a three-day morning session was declared so Bibi first of all asked to bring all the tabarrukat back so this is the first time where visual impact was coupled with the story, the auditory input, in, um, impact. And when Hazrat Abbas's alam was brought with Mashka Sakina hanging to it, that set the stage which coupled Karbala with actually the event. And when Ali Asghar is burnt, cradle was brought everybody remember this so she was actually setting the stage in a way that azadari could get coupled with visual evidence that nobody could de deny this is the evidence 
She's the one who's presenting the evidence of Karbala. And we go through history. Um, we know that Imam Zainul Abidin, Karbala had such an impact upon him that every time food was brought in front of him, he would cry. Water was brought in front of him, he would cry. And he would start crying and, and he said, how can I drink this water for which my jad was slaughtered along with his loved ones? And he would cry so much that his beard will get completely soaked in tears. One of the Imam's caregivers said, oh, son of Prophet, how long will you continue to cry like this? And he said, you haven't done the justice. Yusuf had 12 children, one sons, only one of them disappeared. And as a consequence, he cried so much, even though the child was alive, he cried so much that he lost his eyesight. I have lost every one of my, my brothers, my father and my father's companions. Similarly, on another occasion, somebody said to Imam that if you continue to cry this, you will die. You will pass away. And Imam said to him, you don't know what I know and what I have gone through. This is Azadari. This is the foundation of Azadari. Imam Bakr says that you should arrange Azadari for Imam Hussain, cry over him and order your families and loved ones to do matam. And when you meet each other, you cry out loud and offer Imam Hussain's condolences to each other. On behalf of Imam Hussain, the one who would perform such an act, Allah will give you reward, sawab, and also give you jannah. And he said, it is equal to 2,000 Hajj and Umrah. And as if you have performed Jihad in the company of Imams along with them. And you know, um, we know that Imam also used to um, really value all those who read Qasida, Salam and Marcia for Imam Hussein. And one day, Kamit, he recited a few stanza of his poetry. Imam Hussain, uh, Imam, our Imam um, was so overcome by his tears and grief. And he said to, oh, Kamit, I do not have enough wealth to reward you. Your reward is with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he said, as long as you live, you continue to perform our Nusrat. And this is responding to Halmin Nasir and Yansurna. This is something that Ziyabai has done all of his life. May Allah bless him. I think we are indebted to uh, people like him who have really um, not only brought youth together, but also gave meaning to Azadari. Sheikh Tusi says that Imam would say for those who lived away from Karbala during Ziyarat that you point towards Karbala and offer your salam and curse upon those who killed Imam Hussain and then offer two rakat salat and cry loudly over Imam Hussain's Masaib. And for those who are not crying, order them to cry. The purpose of Azadari was not to remember the Masaib of Imam Hussain salam, but also to really identify those who committed such atrocities and crimes. Imam Jafar Sadiq salam. Imam Musi Imam Kazim said, as the month of, month of Muharram descended upon us, all smiles will disappear from the face of Imam, and his face would become overcome with grief. And as the day of Ashur approached, he would be beside himself, and he will continue to cry out loudly. And he would say, today is the day when my judge, Imam Hussain, was martyred in Karbala. And once a famous poet, Jafar bin Ufwan, he visited the Imam and the Imam offered him a place next to him. And he said, I have heard that you recite poetry about Imam Hussain. He said, yes, O Imam. When he recited the poetry, Imam started crying so loudly that his cries could be heard from a distance. The Imam said, O Jafar, some designated angels of Allah are present in this majlis. This is the saying of Imam. 
They are listening to you crying over your poetry. Oh, Jafar, Allah has just warranted and assured me that your sins are forgiven and you will go to Jannah. Now, Muhaddis Qummi, he narrated that Abu Harun, who was a famous poet of Imam, also a blind Sahabi, he used to recite Karbala poetry in the company of the Imam. And one day, Imam asked him to recite the Marcia that he had written about Imam Hussain. The Imam then asked him and all of his household to gather behind the curtain. And when he recited, everyone cried loudly so the, their cries could be heard throughout the streets. So and if you go through historical perspective, you will see that each and every Imam gave us a perspective on Azadari and also remembering Imam Hussein. When you think about, you know, um, Sheikh Suduk, who um, died in 381, he was the first to get on the pulpit and he recited the first Majlis extempore. And his students were listening to his speech and this is how the tradition of mimbar started. And one time, people on the day of Ashura spontaneously came out after the Majlis and they sh started shouting, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. And that was the first Julus that was taken out in Baghdad. And the same year, a Julus was also taken out in, in Egypt. So this really tells you the, the, our you know, past aspects of Azadari with regards to the historical perspective. And so public demonstration then started in 351. On the 10th of Muharram, it was spontaneous, and this has really continued to build. And this tradition of Azadari then arrived in the Indian subcontinent. And as you know that the story of Karbala as it spread, it had to be reformed to meet the intellectual levels of the people and the capacity of the people to really absorb the essence of Azadari because they hadn't really seen um, them themselves. And then when you actually look at um, their Mir Anis had played such an important role in Mir Tabir and setting the essence of Azadari in a, in a way that they use Urdu language and a poetry to set up as to how to communicate and promote the essence of Azadari to local people who were really also struggling from the linguistic perspective. And Mir Anis would say that Misreho Safara Sifate Lashkare Jarrar Alfaz ki tezi ko na pahunche koi talwar Nukte ho jo dhale to alif khanjar e khunkhar Mad aage badhe barchiyo ko tol ke ek bar Ghol ho ke kabhi fauj ko yu lardte nahi dekha Maktal mein bhi rana aisa kabhi padhte nahi dekha They actually use the language to create the map and the image of Karbala. This is the imagery that was really, really important. And then as we know that subsequently when Dr. Safdar Hussain, he followed Mir Anis's tradition as well. And Amir always loved this mercy. I'll read a few of those and you can see how valor and also Fazail are really attributed in the Masaib of Imam Hussain. And that is how tradition of Azadari really came to being. So now imagine that Imam Hussein's Lashkar has arrived in the area of Qatsiya. And then Hur comes and intercepts Imam. Say, Qatsiya ke kareen tha wo garohe madani. Samne dash se besakta andi si uthi. Damne gard phata, fauj namudar hui. Shahwala ke rafiqo ne nazar teet pe ki. Bole abbas ke kun sar pe chadhe aate ho. किसने दी तुमको इजाजत के बढ़े आते हो बा अदब हो यह है सरदार खुदा वंद जमी मेरा सरदार है नामो से दो आलम का अमी वारिस ए इल्म नबी दोष पैगंबर का मकी हूं का दरिया ना बहा दूं तो मैं अब्बास नहीं है शगालों की कतारें ये कवादे क्या हैं काट के ढेर लगा दूंगा इरादे क्या हैं लश्कर ए फौज था और इब्ने रिहाई जिसका बात जो प्यास की शिद्दत से न कर सकता 
हाल ये देख के शबीर का दिल भर आया मुस्तरब हो के ये अब्बास से हजरत ने कहा इनके सूखे हुए होठों से दुआ लो भाई अपने अल्लाह के बंदों को बचा लो भाई हुक्म होठों से न निकला था कि तकमील हुई मशकें ऊँटों से उतारी गई ताजील हुई रहम आसूदा हुआ फर्ज की तकमील हुई देखते देखते सहरा की जमीन झील हुई घेर के अबर करम साकी कौसर आए मश कांधे पे उठाए अली अकबर आए शागलें लेके बढ़ा आप अलमदार जरी फर्श सो कातर अशतर हुए सैराब सभी सूखे होंठों पे नमाया थी तशक्कुर की तरी दिल अकीदत से भरा आंख नदामत से झुकी शर्म ऐसा से हुई फौज सितम गर पानी इसको कहते हैं करम हो गए पत्थर पानी और ने हर चंद ये चाह कि न हो बेअबी नर्म लहजा था मगर बात थी गुस्ताखी की बस ये सुनना था कि अनसार की तलवार खींची सीनाए और पे थी अब्बास के नेजे की अनी मुलतजी इज्न का था कुत बाजुए हुसैन आँख थी मुंतजर जुम्बिश अबरू हुसैन शाह हलम से मजबूर रजा क्या देते हुर के अंजाम से वाकिफ थे सजा क्या देते अपने परवाने को शोलों की हवा क्या देते हुरता हुर उसको दुआओं के सिवा क्या देते सबको समझा के वलीब ने वली ने रोका अपने जैगम को हुसैन इबन अली ने रोका and this is how actually the foundation of azadari was really established in our indian subcontinent so um now i will bring a little bit of neuroscience and then the modern context into how the azadari actually came into into really um being as we practice it i think in this time and age when you um some people point out this malang who has decided to protect one aspect of azadari he has learned that for 10 year muawiya did not only prevent imam hussain's name from coming from the pulpit a podium but it also did tabarra as well so the malang has finally decided that in my life i will do nothing but i will say ali 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 and and that's it faqih e shahar ko hairan kalandaron ne kiya gali gali nikal aaye ali ali karte he is actually doing his job he is staying like janab e misam e tamar and so tu ne dar se misam bayan dete hain rahega zikr e ali hum zawan dete hain so they are doing their job may allah be pleased with them and may imam hussain reward them and then on the other hand you see these azadars and matami who come out in the streets chanting ya hussain ya hussain ya hussain doing matams and jirzani or khama they have decided that the, the way umma has forgotten ghadir we will never let them forget karbala we will never allow them or forget them karbala they are doing their duty the rest of us so called intellectuals who talk about the philosophy of karbala pretending that we understand ali shariati's philosophy of karbala what are we doing so that's really the big question is that what it is that we are doing 80% who is in the middle and they can create a tsunami i mean snowflakes are the most delicate things on this planet you put it together it becomes an avalanche what are our contributions i think this is a moment of really serious consideration especially in a gathering like this and i also narrate one thing that maulana also pointed out um just couple of months ago i had some university students who approached me and they said we joined university and the muslim brothers that came up to us and they said you know karbala happened 1400 years why is it still a dispute among ourselves two princes they fought and yes it was unfair one of them was killed let's forget about this because it's it's causing divisions among ourselves and he says it makes perfect sense to us that we will be much more stronger if we forget 
all aspects of Karbala on this, this tragedy. And you can see how these Wahhabis are working on your children in the universities. It's a very, very serious poison, not alone the poison that's coming from within, that I will actually talk about that as well. I know I may not, never get invited again, but I'm an academic. I have to respond to these people, not any trustees or any other organization. So Amir may get, or Minhaj get beat up, that's, that's okay. So they said also that Karbala is just a story. And it happened, get over it, and then move on to it. And the stories are just that, stories are really not important. It's a very good reason and rationale. And I explained to them, all right, sit down here. Look, historical events, movements are important because they define who we are. Just remember that history is inescapable. It studies the past and the legacies of the past, albeit in the present time. It's not dead subject. It connects things through time and it is essential. Now history helps us understand past. What is that we do, where we have come from, who we stand for, who we, uh, who we actually seek salvation and how we have find Sirat Mustaqim uh, through them. And I said to them that, look, preserving historical narr narratives are essential and they are important for the survival and our ability to judge between right and wrong, just and unjust, tyranny and zalim and mazloom. And, and I said, often North American whites would say to you, let's put racism aside. It's easier for them to do. It's easier for them to actually say, let's put racism aside because they are the one who are perpetrating the actual racist comments and also racist treatments. So it's easier for them to do, but we are not the ones who are actually, um, you know, uh, we are the victims in that case. So Umid um, Umi Safi once said, it's vital that mutual respect and coexistence not be licensed for eradicating real historical facts and particularities. So you can't really ignore these aspects of history. We talk about Ittihad e al Muslimin. Who do you think Imam Zamana, when his zahur happens, he will dig them out of the grave? There is no Ittihad e al Muslimin. He will take the revenge. So, you know, we have under no obligations or no position to be able to offer this thing. You don't have to be nasty towards other people. You don't have to really you know, point fingers at somebody else. But at the same time, it's really important that we stay true to our own core. So I said to them, oh, my dear youth, Karbala is a historical fact and the preservation of this historical narrative is essential. Otherwise, with the extinction of this narrative, the Shia will also become extinct. With our extinction, the true aspect of Islam will become extinct. And all you will be left with are the ISIS and the Taliban. They are not the representative of Islam. So you cannot really um, overlook all of these things. So one of the students said, okay, it's a story based on historical facts, but why does it need to be recapitulated every year, all the time? Why do you do this? And why is it that you take out Jalus? Why Matam? And some people actually do matum with their hands, the other will use zanjir, and some will use qama, and then there are some who leave the majlis as soon as matum starts. But what is this, this discrepancy? What is this really the reason behind all of this? And I said to them that, look, um, now I have to put on my academic hat. And this is where I hope you're still awake because I am taking you into your world of brain. And my tomorrow's lecture is it's really inspired by one khutbah from Imam Ali from Najul Balagha. So I hope that you will be, uh, will be there. So I said to them, look, Azadari is a very powerful communication tool. Azadari makes a point. It is memorable. It's meaningful. It creates real emotions. It builds connections and it tells a story. I have asked 
then I tried to explain to him from the neuroscience perspective that repeated storytelling actually ingrains itself in the mind and one becomes part of it. This is why a story should remain consistent. And we see many of our Zakirin, they actually change the story just to make people cry. Is kaum ke rone ko yehi baat badi hai, zahra bhare darbar mein haq maang rahi hai. You don't have to actually distort just to make people cry. Make sure the story is true. You also see the images of Imam Hussain depicted everywhere. Nobody has seen Imam Hussain in this time. How could you actually create an imagery of him? And then the images of two people will be completely different. And all of a sudden you create chaos and confusion in the essence of Azadari. I think we should really try to stay away from all of this. Now for also a story to be credible, it must be true. So knowing your history is really important. Otherwise, you will not be able to tell, tell just from unjust. And I said to them, the Azadari is really what we call in the neuroscience field and psychology, neurocoupling. So we did an experiment where we had one person in the magnet, mag fMRI image. And we asked him to read a story. And then another person sitting in a different magnet was listening to him. So this person, when he was actually reading the story, started to feel the pain of the character in the story, his brain areas lit up. And those brain areas lit up where you would normally feel pain. The person who was sitting in the other magnet, it exactly happened to him as well. So Azadari actually becomes a transportation vehicle that transports you right in the desert of Karbala. And there are two hormones, just remember, they play a really important role. One is oxytocin and the other one is cortisol. So depending upon the level of these two transmitters, you either get complete transportation or you get partial transportation. So those who get complete transportation, they feel, they can imagine Imam Hussain falling from his horse with so many arrows on, you know, pierced through his body that he never lands. When they see themselves in that condition, they will feel the pain of Imam, Imam Hussain. They take out Zanjir and they actually try to inflict the same thing. This is not really something that you could condone because this depends on fitrat and Islam is religion of deen and fitrat. You read so beautifully about the importance of azadari. Aadat nahi fitrat ke taqaze hain zaruri. Ham logon ki fitrat hai azadari hai shabir. So it is actually in our nature and it's nothing to be embarrassed person who is actually fully transported will feel very different than a person who's partially transported. So if you provide and actually raise the level of these hormones and transmitters in your brain, you will have the impact that you will feel the same pain. You will feel yourself in the desert of Karbala. You will feel yourself in the company of Imam Hussain, and then you will respond, Hal minna yan surna. You actually respond back to that. And it's just, So you will actually emulate the character. You will feel the pain of the character in the story psychologically. And then what happens is that you can then also have really it recognized in a way that it becomes part of your fitrat, part of your nature. So that's one aspect is that this transportation is really important. The story needs to be credible. The storyteller needs to be credible. If you do not respect the one who sits in the pulpit, you will not believe in the story. You will not be transported. You will not feel the pain of Imam Hussain. They are performing Matam and Zanjir Zani, maybe be, be pleased with them. This is how they feel. There is absolutely no authority upon anyone to point fingers at them or that. The other important thing is the visualization. Um, people say, Ya Alam, 
ये इस दौर में इट्स दखिया नूसी एंड यू नो इट रियली हर्ट्स वन आई हर्ट आर ओन वन ऑफ स्पीकर इन आर कम्युनिटी दैट यू नो दीज आर ऑल फोर्टीन हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑल ट्रेडिशन वाई यू स्टिल कैरी Zuljana, why are you still carrying these horses in this time and age? There are modern ways to convert this azadari and modernize it. It's very easy for them to say modernizing azadari, right? So visualization is really important um, because what it does is that when you see Alam of Ghazi Abbas, with it immediately transports you. It actually does is that it takes your auditory cortex, what you heard from Maulana. and it couples it with your visual cortex when these cortices are activated by a bombardment of sensory inputs you actually transport you will feel the transportation and all of a sudden you know all these shair allah which allah has also respected they really become part of this so they are really very important and when you take them out you are responding to calls of imam husain saying hal min nasir yansurna So as I said that you know there are very few like Ziya Bhai who are credible storytellers they are the true embodiment of a zakir and also a servant of Imam Hussain and when such people are the beacon of our light this is really a true model for I have seen Ziya Bhai ever since in university and you know Imam Hussain is far away from my reach but he's the servant of imam husain he's enough a beacon for me to drop everything in my own life and i say labbaik ya bhai so i think you know as you know that um many people are also beginning to undermine the essence of azadari um which is really unfortunate so our problem is not people from outside it's actually what the innovations are occurring from within so one of the students then said to me that i get this grief part but what about why do you guys all get worked up during fazail and not i hadri and not i hadri what is the purpose of all of this and he says this is not azadari this is mazadari so i said to them may allah's curse be upon you and you know that your it neuroscientist you know why do you think that yazid did what he did he could have could have killed imam husain and be done with it why is it that even today three you know so many years have gone by 1400s that they still hate us they still kill us and you know they wanted to psychologically impact us and change us into this oppressive subdued form and i said we did an experiment on rats the these rats they had never smelled the smell of cherry blossom we gave them the smell of cherry blossom then we shocked them now this rat for the rest of his life will be afraid of smell of cherry blossom then we watched its followers its children and then their children they had never been exposed to cherry blossom but the moment you actually get them to smell cherry blossom they freeze they are fearful so this fear which changes your synaptic connections in your brain it actually changes the neural circuit when it changes the neural circuit it changes your genetic makeup and when you actually have that genetic makeup is changed your behavior changes and this is why you see even today um you know they are trying to commit these atrocities and this kind of constant depression constant oppression will alter your brain just like these rats and you will be afraid of them all your life right it is really something very very important and it's not being done out of you know blue it's very very strategic and they're very well organized and making sure and i think the impact you can see also on hazara people and also people from parachinar they just sit and take it because they have subdued your brain to an extent that you don't have the ability to really fight and then get up and i said this is why you see soz you see salam and then you see marsia you see fazail first and these fazail are the one that allow you to overcome this depression this sensitization this desensitization 
This allows you to really come up out of this fearful situation. And it is psychologically built into our majalis. When we get up, we say, Yaili or Nanara Hedri. This is actually a means for us to overcome that post-traumatic stress syndrome that they are trying to impact. So this is actually the neuroscience of Azadari. And, and it is strategically set up. The other thing I'd like to warn, and I'll finish uh, shortly, is that one of the Maulana, he came and he said, Imam Ali could be return the sun and he could eat at 40 different places. And then when he struck Umar bin Abdullah, Gabriel had to hold his hand and, and Mikhail had to shove his um, you know, wings underneath to, to prevent this strike from going into the earth. I'd say this is all Ma Fakul Fitra. This really raises a Harry Potter concept in our children's mind. And we shouldn't describe this. And the other thing that you know is important also for them to remember is that when you are comparing Ali, Mazallah saying that you're committing ghulu, tell me where is the limit of Allah's stature in that category? How could I exceed something that actually doesn't have a comparator at any level? So I said today, you are attacking Imam Ali to promote your own agenda. Tomorrow it will be Quran. Two ants are talking and one of them says, one of them says, Let's get into our holes because Suleiman is coming with his army. We'll get crushed. And Hazrat Suleiman heard this and he smiled. Hazrat Musa took his stick and he threw it. It became snakes. Then he parted the, the Niles with it. And then, you know, you can go on even the resurrection. So this is your next target. But I said, just remember one thing. You take out passion out of your Azadari, you're finished. You are finished because you can see in other communities among us, they will come and say, five minutes over, what is this? Time is money. And I think the moment you take out passion, and I can tell you, your azadari will be over. So it's really important for us to also maintain that passion in azadari. And also, I think it's important for educated people to step into a halka and do their matam because you are the one who are actually representing it. And I think most educated people should chant Nara Hadri because this is So I think this is really, um, really important for us to make sure that we really go um, and overcome these challenges and attacks that are coming from inside. So moving forward in the future, in a couple of minutes, I'll wind up. Unfortunately, I didn't get to say what I wanted to because of the, the shortage of the time. But I think, as I said, that we should. Um, so the question is that how should we move Azadari and how Azadari would look like in years to come? You now we give to our children not where we have received Azadari, but where they will be. And that's what Imam Ali has also said. We have to start reading ourselves. It is unfortunate. Our ulama, they work so hard and we expect them to really give us a dose of fadail in 12 days and hope that that's sufficient. So I think at times I also think that we are only not 12 imamis, but 12 days. That 12 days and it's hard to find people who will really come. But a person who doesn't read is no better than a person who cannot read. So it's really important that we do our own and in so doing we will raise the level of our ulama as well. You push them harder. Not really just sit there and take it. And Imam Ali has also said that learn your religion, do not inherit it. So it's really important for our children to be able to really learn your own religion. So that's an important thing for future moving forward that we have to start reading ourselves. The thing is that we invite Maulana, we have a pet question that we ask every Maulana. We test their Iman, their faith. So, Maulana, ye bata de. And if 
the actual answer reconciles with our own ideology, yaar kitne achche maulana ko bula liya. And if it doesn't, isko pakad ke le aaye the. Right? So I think it's really important that we have to raise the level of our own intellect to be able to really push ulama also to read, uh, read it at a higher, higher level. So I also think that, you know, for um, us, we need to be reminded that the sole purpose of the, our creation, and our, this is my message for younger children, that our purpose is not just to cry. A baby cries the moment it's born. A Shia of Imam Ali and Imam Hussein should lead humanity in every facet of the life, every discipline. They look at somebody passing by and they will say, Ye Husseini hai. Ye Ali ka manne wala. So I think this is something that's really, really important for our children is that you live in an environment which you have tremendous protection. You live in the greatest country in the world. You have all the freedom. But with this comes a tremendous responsibility that for you to actually raise your voice to respond to Imam Hussain's Halmin Nasir in Yansurna is to raise your level, not just for the sake of job, but how can I make life better for humanity? So step up to the plate, push yourself. It's not the kids living in third world countries who will find cure for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, AIDS or malaria. It's you. You, the followers of Ahlul Bayt. So that's where your stature is. This is where you really have to raise Azadari at that level. We need not worry about preserving Azadari. In this time and age, you don't have to worry about preserving Azadari. Azadari is preserving us. And this is the only platform nobody in the world has where you can actually have philosophy, young, old, you know, religion, history, Quran, fiqh being taught in one class. This is the best university and we have the best platform. But why is that we are actually not making humanity better for everyone else? This is the Azadara of Imam Hussain, who will actually change the world. I think we should turn our tears into rivers that would flood ignorance out of us. We should turn our tears in a form that, that will eliminate all forms of divisions among ourselves. We talk about, you know, people know mostly who are uneducated, that they do not have patience. In mitahamul nahiya, bardash nahiya. Actually, it's the educated people who don't have the patience. Jaha matam shuru hua, frowning, do minute namaz ko they start to complain as if they read namaz all the time in their houses. I think we should make our matam an avalanche of resolve against unjust, against tyranny, against oppression and falsehood. This is how we would respond to Halmin Nasir in Yansurna. I think again, you know, as we say matam, um, I say is bazme hai midate shabir ki khushbu. Jis tarha se hai sham ne khole huye gesu. Khushbu mere alfaz ki pheli hui harsu. Har lafz ko tole hai mawaddat ka tarazu. Matam ke hai ye daag jo sine pe sajay hai. Matam ke hai ye daag jo sine pe sajay hai. Safdar tujhe surkhaab ke par aaj lagay hai. And, and when you actually see Amir do the matam, I will rephrase it. The way he does his matam. Matam ke hai ye daag jo sine pe sajay hai. Amir tujhe fitrus ke par aaj lagay hai. So I think we should make matam um, a really, a, a, you know, in an announcement against unjust tyranny and oppression. I think we should make our tears a prism through which we can see our piety, taqwa, salat, namaz, roza, hajj, zakat, all of these aspects should be reflected through the prism of our tear. So, hum mala ko mante hain, mala ki nahi mante. So, you know, piety and also taqwa is part of an important
important aspect of our azadari. And I think with this, I would really close by saying that kar wuzu abe mawaddat se salami pesh kar. Bargahe shah mein dil ki ghulami pesh kar. Ay qalam tarz e haqiqi soz e jami pesh kar. Tu taraf dar e Husseini hai. Ye hami pesh kar. Martabe mein kam nahi janun ga tujko meer se. Daad pa jaye agar tu hazrat e shabbir se. آپ کا بہت بہت شکریہ انشاءاللہ پھر کبھی موقع ملا لیکن یہ سب میرے خال میں فضیلتیں بھی میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ یہ زیابہی کی مرون منت ہے زیابہی کو میں بچپن سے جانتا ہوں ان کا علم ان کا تقوی ان کی سوچ ان کی فقہ ان کی سروس میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ اگر میں نے زندگی میں کسی ازادار کو دیکھا ہے اور جس نے ٹرو ازاداری کی ڈیفینیشن پروائیٹ کیا ہے تو وہ زیابہی ہیں ہماری سب کی یہی دعا ہے کہ مولا ان کو اسی طرح سے ہمارے درمیان اسی نہج پہ ازاداری کی سٹرنٹھ اور پرموشن کے لیے میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ ہم لوگ اصل میں زیاب بھائی آپ کے نوکر ہیں ہماری یہ جسارت کبھی ہو بھی نہیں سکتی کہ ہم آپ کے بارے میں کچھ کہیں آپ کی پریزنس ہی یہاں ہمارے لیے ایک بہت بڑی سعادت ہے اور ہمارے لیے بہت بڑی سٹرنٹھ ہے میں یہاں کی انتظامیہ کا دارہ جعفریہ اور زلفقر حیدری میں بہت ہی تہدل سے مشکور ہوں لیکن ہم لوگ اکثر کہلا جاتے ہیں کہ ہم مردہ پرستوں کی قوم ہیں جب گزر جاتے ہیں تو ہم لوگوں کو یاد کرتے ہیں سچے بھائی کی جو خدمات ہیں انہوں نے جس طرح سے میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ دین کی خدمت کی اور ازاداری کی خدمت کی ہے وہ بڑے بڑے علماء نہیں کر سکتے ہیں اب بے لاس خدمت کی ہے ٹھیلوں پہ کھڑے ہو کے گلیوں میں بازاروں میں گوچوں میں اپنا پیسہ خرچ کر کے یا کہ پیسہ لے کے تو مولا ان سب کی توفیقات میں اضافہ کرے ان کے درجات کو بلند کرے اب یہ ماشاءاللہ وہی نسل وہی ٹرڈیشن جو ہے and it's actually going on through Ali he's also serving at the same level آپ سب کو اور میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ یہ اس ادارے کی سب سے بڑی آپ کے ہاں ایک نئی ٹرڈیشن آپ نے جو شروع کی ہے مولا آپ کو اس پر ثابت قدم رکھیں آپ کو اور ایفرٹ دیں اور آپ کو جدائی خیر دیں مولا السلام علیکم کسی تاخیر کے بغیر